for New York City. He's racing the New York City Marathon. Trust me, I'm not going to be chasing him down. I promise, I promise, I promise. There it is, there it is, chicken noodle soup. Oh man, butter it, just butter it. Oh man, look at that steam. So it's 18, about 18 degrees out in Denver today. What is going on? What is going on? I know I talk a lot about the weather right now, but this is abnormal for Denver. Uh, so I don't wanna get sick before New York City. And yes, I'm gonna reveal my race strategy for the race in, when you're watching this, let's see, Thursday, Friday, so four days from now, uh, it's happening. It's about to go down. But I just got to say, the Facebook group, uh, which I, I promoted in yesterday's vlog, it's going to be fun, everybody. We already have two posts for the New York City Marathon, two posts for running injuries, uh, one post for the Boston Qualifier Goals, uh, half marathon training post. So basically, again, the Demore Global Running Facebook group, it's all about going a little deeper into topics about running and topics that come up on this YouTube channel. So, so far so good. Already well over 500 uh, members of the group. And again, it's linked down below in the description. It's, uh, it's fun and patience. If you do post and I don't get to it um, immediately, just, you know, I'll get to it eventually. Uh, but again, I wanna keep it on point to running topics just so we really hone in on the goodness there so it's going well all right i'm gonna put back some chicken noodle soup again just trying to put the goodness into the body and then uh we'll get into the race strategy here in a little bit oh man it's... all right shall we do this shall we do this once again new york city marathon 2019 there it is race strategy and yes once again another contest but before we dive in real quick an update on the location for the group run on saturday we're not meeting at the Tavern on the Green in Central Park. We're meeting at the Delacorte Theater in Central Park. There it is on your screen. Look at that title. Type it into your phone. You will find it. Uh, yeah, we had to move it because there's a 5K race happening near the Tavern on the Green. Plus, the finish for the New York City Marathon is right around there. So it's just going to be kind of crazy at the Tavern on the Green. And we are meeting at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, Delacorte Theater, Central Park, cannot wait and yes i will bring the banner we'll get some pictures it's gonna be a good time okay question of the day what will be my finishing time for the 2019 new york city marathon that's right the winner who guesses it right on to the second will win a free pair of running shoes from me but nobody won from amsterdam i went back and looked at all the comments nobody got it somebody was two seconds off very close but you got to be right down to the second and yes what i'm about to share about my race strategy for the next five to ten minutes will help with your guess okay so hear me out here first of all though before diving into the strategy for new york let's just review what happened in amsterdam so the gun goes off in amsterdam it's a beautiful morning, beautiful weather. Uh, my first marathon ever. I've done 50Ks, 50 milers, 100 milers. Uh, um, I've attempted a 100 miler, didn't finish. But uh, this is my first road marathon. So a little bit of inexperience played out in, the, uh, in my debut marathon. Absolutely. I'm calling a spade a spade. So I was in a pack of about 20 runners at the one mile mark, uh, one and a half mile mark. And even, I think, approaching the two mile mark, I was glancing at my watch. The watch was saying about 520 to 525 a mile. And I, I didn't freak out, but I was like, eh, is this, fa you know, is this fast enough? I need to run. So I was, the goal was to run under 518 a mile pace uh, in order to qualify for the Olympic trials, which 518 a mile gives you a two hour and 19 minute finish for the marathon. So I made the decision to move up from that pack 
to the next pack, which yes, Michael, and I know I'm, I'm butchering his name, but Michael Butter was in that pack, a pace setter, who, crazy enough, was using that uh, effort in Amsterdam as a tune-up for New York City. He's racing the New York City Marathon. Trust me, I'm not gonna be chasing him down. I promise, I promise, I promise. But he's got a 209.58 marathon uh, PR to his name. So he's a very accomplished uh, runner. He's, I think he has some records even, uh, some Dutch uh, road racing records. Anyway, uh, so I caught up to them and they pulled me through, very grateful, they pulled me through a three minute PR for the half marathon in a marathon race. So we came through the halfway point at 106.53, which was basically two minutes to two minutes and 30 seconds too fast for that two hour and 19 minute mark. You know, if you, if you just round up to let's say 107 for the half marathon mark in Amsterdam, uh, if you just do the math, 107 times two is actually, wait a minute, is 214. So I would, no, yeah, it was 214. So yeah, it, it put me, um, it put me two to three minutes ahead of where I needed to be, basically. I do it, sorry, I just got a little distracted. So from Amsterdam, from that 106.53, which honestly, I did not feel like I was running too fast. In retrospect, I was, but I felt pretty controlled and I felt comfortable, but sure enough, like it caught up to me about four miles later. Yeah, about four, four to five miles later at mile 18, where I really hit the wall. Um, so the question becomes, for the New York City Marathon, will I attempt to chase down two hours and 19 minutes once again? That's the question, right? That is the question. Of course I will. Of course I will. It's the New York City Marathon, in my humble opinion, the most prestigious marathon in the world. Now I'm biased because my mom's from New York. And another question I'm asking myself is, did I pick up fitness from the Amsterdam Marathon? I, I think so. Now, of course, the big factor is going to be the legs. Are the legs, uh, I know they're not going to be 100%. That just doesn't happen. That takes, again, as I mentioned earlier in the week, it usually takes, I've heard, four, six, even eight weeks to fully recover from a hard effort in a marathon race. Uh, but at least aerobically, I'm pretty excited. So with all that said, here is the actual race strategy for New York. Now, it's a little more difficult to track pacing because the course has the bridges and it has the elevation gain. So the splits are going to be a little different than in Am Amsterdam as far as the consistency. Um, I have heard now I've, I've done a lot of research. I'm listening to a lot of your comments about the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Uh, you have adrenaline at the beginning even though the first mile is uphill uh, and then the second mile is downhill. So you got that adrenaline up the first mile, up the bridge, and then you have a pretty big downhill for the next mile. A lot of people go out too fast because the adrenaline carries them up the first mile and then down the second mile when your legs are still feeling really, really good. So I, I'm, I'm making a lot of mental notes just to go out easy, go out slow. Obviously not 505 pace. Here's the strategy. I, I hope to find another pack of runners that will be running 520 a mile, 520 a mile, 520 a mile. Now again, because of the vertical, uh, the elevation gain, those splits are gonna fluctuate a little bit. I know that, um, but 520 a mile, if you can hold it for a long, long time, that puts you at two hours, 19 minutes and 44 seconds. So my goal, and so that's, that's 44 seconds too slow from what I need to run for the Olympic tri trials qualifying time. But if I can run 520s for as long as possible, as long as possible, just clipping them off and maybe, okay, okay, maybe I run a 530 on one of the, on one of the later, let's say it led, uh, uh, the Queensboro Bridge, which I think is around mile 15, I'll double check. Um, let's say it's a 530 or a 540, I'm not gonna freak out. I'm not gonna, freak. that's what happened in Amsterdam. I just, you know, I, I got a little nervous when I saw 520, 525 on my watch. So um, then at about mile 18, if I can hold 520 average pace up to mile 18, I will need to make up basically 44 seconds in the last eight miles. 
And if, if I'm in that position, you better believe I'm gonna still, I'm gonna go for it. Now, again, just have to listen to the legs and um, tomorrow I'm gonna talk about my racing kit, which is gonna change a little bit from Amsterdam. So come back tomorrow, I'll fill you in on the game plan for the racing kit, which yes, will impact, um, yeah, it, it has the potential to impact my time as well. So 520 a mile, I wanna find a pack and I've heard, and maybe some of you can chime in down in the comments, I've heard that um, the ability to find a pack of runners running 520 a mile is gonna be pretty, like there's a lot of people that, okay, a lot of people, but there's, there's gonna be a lot of, quite a few runners that are attempting to break two hours and 20 minutes um, in their marathon because it's, it's very competitive. Uh, the citizens race, the sub elite marathon runners that are not quite the elites, uh, there's a big pack of them. Um, so that's the goal, that's the race strategy for the 2019 New York City Marathon. I'm just gonna double check, make sure I'm not leaving anything out real quick. Uh, bottom line, I'm very excited to run more within my given ability level. Now, of course, of course, the course does play a factor because there, there are the climbing. I'm honest, I'm not afraid of the climbing. You all know how much I love running up mountains. Obviously, it's totally different in a road marathon, but they don't make me too nervous. Um, I guess, you know, I do need to be a little prepared for the downhill, uh, you know, especially later in the race, and I'm not gonna kill my quads on the backside of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. I'm just gonna be relaxed and um, not let the adrenaline get to me because you've got the New York City skyline, you've got the crowds, um, so I'm just gonna chill out and 520s, 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 and yes, tomorrow I will tell you the shoes I will be racing in, all right? I love you all. We're gonna call it there. I know it was a simple vlog, just kind of talking out this strategy. I really hope somebody guesses my exact time for New York City. Um, if it's two hours and 18 minutes and 59 seconds, that would be good. That would be a good thing, but we shall see. I'm gonna give it a go, and at the end of the day, I'm racing for my mom, and that is what is most important for this, uh, this 2019 NYC race. So, all right, I love you guys. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. We're gonna toss it back, yes, to the Amsterdam Marathon vlog on the right, and on the left, we'll toss it back to the beginning of this training block, which really started after the Pikes Peak Ascent. So you can see the full journey back there. All right, love you all. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.